All right, good morning everyone. Thanks for, uh, for coming today. It's very exciting to present uh, our lean journey to everyone. Before I get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. So, um, safety-wise, um, evacuation would be straight through this door to the left and straight out to the grass up the top. Um, toilets are through that door uh, and to your left. And the female toilets are in the office. And so we'll have to escort you to the toilet if you need to go. Um, as you can see, I'll, probably the presentation is probably going to go for about 10 minutes. Hopefully it'll be a little bit interactive. Um, I'll, I'll brief you on the products we make here and what Chamberlain Group does. Um, and then I'd also like to introduce uh, our team. So myself, Graham Sheeky, Head of Operations. I've got Shane McParland, the Manufacturing Manager. Uh, Eduardo is our Quality Manager slash Production Support. And we have Faisal, who is our supervisor that runs all the assembly processes and lean guru. So the product you see here, this is the product we make on this site. Uh, we have a lot of other products and some of them are made here, some of them are made in our partner factories around the world. <coughs> so um, again, this is our main seller. We sell about 15,000 units of these a year. They're commercial roller door openers. They drive doors up and down and press the button. On the right hand side, we also have a residential range of roller door openers. Uh, they're manufactured in Mexico and in China, and we import them into our business. The lean journey is all about Grifco and this product we manufacture here. You'll see a few banners around the place as well. We have our a local engineering team based here in this office as well. So there's a, a group of eight people and they design products for the international market and here. So this is a brand new commercial product that we've made one batch of so far, uh, just launched last month. It's a different application to open big doors with different spring configurations. We have a, uh, a beefed up residential opener, so it does light commercial doors. We don't make that here, but we design and engineer it here. Uh, the same thing in the back right hand corner of the room. Another different product, it's a residential, completely designed by our team as well. So just a brief history. So Grifco is a brand of a Chamberlain group and is the world's largest manufacturer of automatic garage door openers. Um, our global experience and in innovation has resulted in industry-leading design and some of the most reliable and efficient products available in Australia and New Zealand. So Chamberlain Group is a large company but in Australia, we're 100 people, and, and we get good support from our global our partners, but we're very uh, independent in what we do here. Grifco's been around for a long time, so it's first founded family-owned company in 1914, and then commenced manufacturing in Australia then. <coughs> the Chamberlain Group entered Oceana um, in 1982, um, and then Merlin, which is our residential brand, around 1986 uh, by distributors. And then there's a couple of changes. They closed Auckland and then moved manufacturing to Malaysia. In 2006, Chamberlain Group came into Australia and purchased Merlin and Grifka. And that's how we fall under that banner. And five years ago now, we celebrated 100 years of manufacturing in Australia. So everything we do, we want to keep manufacturing here, and that's why we do it. Just touch on that it, that it is a journey. So for this site, um, a previous manufacturing manager came in and implemented operational excellence and started the Grip Go Lean journey. Some of you may have visited the site, I'm not sure, a few years ago. Um, a lot of great work transformed the place out there. But it is a journey, so I, I took over Head of Operations in January 2017. So a little bit of change in leadership, and I had to rethink about what, a little bit about lean, how we're going to implement it. So this is about the second phase of lean for us, and what we've done uh, the last two years. I wanted to thank people in this room and organisations around the Central Coast that have inspired us. Um, because it's events like today, Myself, Ed, Shane, and myself, we get around to the place to have a look at other sites to see what they're doing. Um, so, for instance, Archer, we learned a lot of them. They're very organised, great success. 
and for a machine shop that had a lot of dedicated tooling. So we took that loading and we came back and we implemented it here. Uh, Trendpak had a very good visual management system, so we took pieces off of them. McCain had uh, visual boards and also an international lean program where they had a, a, a lean six sigma expert that would go around the world and visit sites. Uh, Bioaction for your innovation. Uh, it was good to see you doing something different and it's just amazing what, what things you build just out of scratch. Um, and Borg and Bali just by their story. Um, so you can grab a little piece um, from, any, from every company that you do visit. The next three slides is about exactly what we did. It's like a blueprint for me of how we've um, gone about our journey. So January 2017, I reached out to Peter Davies and just to have an open discussion about what do you think this place is like, how, we, how we're going to do business in the future, what do we need to change. So we sort of developed a bit of a plan from there. <coughs> and then you can see there's just some key milestones that we've implemented throughout. With the government program, we got our, uh, our key suppliers involved as well. So another business advisor went to our suppliers to discuss how they can improve their business, in turn helping our incoming materials. We, we noticed we didn't really have great work instructions, so we set out a six-month project to update all of our work instructions. Um, in April, a very important step is we set, up, set out a three-year quality plan. Because we were just going from month to month. Now we have a very strategic look on the future. We know exactly what we have to do. Um, and the safety logo and culture was actually a bit of a turning point too because you've got to get the people involved. So we designed our own safety logo and we wear it on our chest and it's visual around the factory. Because you have to own it and deliver. Uh, and then also our continuous improvement culture, the relentless, relentless pursuit of excellence, we put on our vests as well just to remind us about um, our lean journey as well. So you can't just mention it in a meeting, we, we try and really with it. It took a few months but we got accepted into the business growth grant once we put the business proposal together and uh, we appointed a lean coordinator. So Ficel was our lean coordinator for 12 months, dedicated resource on how we're going to implement all of the actions we're putting in place. Um, we spent some of the government funding, got a consultant in, did a full value history map of the factory and of individual assembly cells, and uh, we come up with a new layer. We didn't want to change too much, but we did change some of the layer to so, uh, improve efficiency. Um, something out of the consultant as well was some A3 operational plans, and they're like business plans. And we will touch on them, they're out in the factory wall. Um, there's so many little things, like, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it's not just one or two things, you have to really it's just keep building on it and you get, a, you get um, great motivation and enthusiasm from every employee. Um, we noticed a lot of our uh, employees haven't done a lot of recent formal training, and you can't just go hire a skilled worker. So, we use some government funding to put them through Certificate 3 in lean practices. And so that's really helped as well because now we're teaching them from the ground up the lean principles. We don't have to stand up in a meeting and say, we're going to do this. Uh, everyone on the shop floor is coming up with these ideas. And 100% government funded. That's probably twenty dollars to $30,000 worth of training. That's, we're actually, we started in October 17, we finished next month. Um, <coughs> So we've broken it into three different blocks over 18 months. And we got into, so all this work, we finally started to actually change some of our assembly cells. Is there any questions so far? Alright, so moving on to 2018, we finished some other cells because we've probably got six assembly cells out there. So we identified we wanted to rebuild every single one of them uh, with lean concepts in mind. The safety culture was such a success, we went 12 months without a safety incident for the first time ever. So that was the uh, first time a, a company globally has ever done that. So we thought, how do we expand this? So then, with the help of Eduardo, we um, created a, a quality logo based on this design, you'll see it out in the factory, and zero defects. So that's what we're striving towards now. 
and that's helping us sell more product because our product is uh, it doesn't fail. Um, that was the completion of stage one of the, the certificate three lane training. We completed <coughs> our main assembly cell, our bread and butter, where we make all the money from. And then design visual boards. So it could be um, a contentious point. A few years ago, we went digital, and everyone was high fiving each other because we thought digital was the way to go. Once a week, we would present um, our weekly metrics up on a digital board, and everyone would stare at it and not really know what the numbers meant. So we got some advice that that wasn't the, the greatest thing to do, and you need a balance between um, paper engagement and digital. So we designed some visual boards, and we'll show them later on in the tour. So that's been unbelievable, because every single day, each worker puts their data on the board, it drives engagement. They understand the numbers now. Um, and then, again, capital, we, we looked at our three to five year capital plan. And so in June last year, we purchased uh, a robotic CNC cell, which is just getting commissioned right now. So we purchased one in 2015. Um, it was so successful, we were able to develop a business case to buy another robot. And so in March, it'll be very exciting when that starts to make its first production pieces. July, we did our second block of Certificate 3 training, because there's 10 modules. Um, each module is four weeks. More design, redesigning of assembly cells. Again, um, first production of U-Drive, that's that product right there. So 100% designed here. Um, we, we created an assembly cell to suit that assembly process. And then we thought, this, this lean stuff's pretty good, so we've, we've started to do some Lean Six Sigma training now. So 15 people conducted yellow belt training, and every employee did white belt training. So that's a one hour course on the concept of Lean Six Sigma. The yellow belt training is a two day program, um, and those 15 projects will be completed the next one. So that's the elimination of waste in the factory, in the office, that's, that's, um, whatever you want it to be. And in March, there's five people going to Chicago to do green belt training. So that's a five day Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma training program. So we're really, we've really embraced the, the continuous improvement on Lean. And once the business gets results, you don't stop, you just want to keep doing that. One of the Six Sigma projects is um, reducing energy here. So we, by the end of this year, we'll absolutely will have um, a 100 kilowatt solar system on this factory as well. So we're looking at um, what we can do for sustainability wise as well. And very important, you've got to celebrate your wins. You've got to stop and reflect on what you've done and congratulate everyone. Almost getting to the end, we're now 2009. <laughs> so January, the new robot cell got delivered from Japan, a Kuma brand. Um, <coughs> And you might have noticed it's a brand new office in there as well. So in the last couple of years we've spent so we invested so much in the factory, the office was still outdated and it didn't um, enhance our team collaboration. Everyone was sitting in different segmented silos. So we had approval to redo the office. Started in September. The handover date is today upstairs. Downstairs handover is January. So now the uh, factory is all laid up and so is the office. So really bringing our culture and engagement all together. And for the first time ever two weeks ago, we brought our whole company together under one roof. We had a conference. So we've got six sites around Australia, New Zealand, 100 people. They all came to the Hunter Valley for a two-day conference to kick off 2019. So um, we're trying to develop a one-team culture. So not, no silos, get rid of all that. Uh, work together, have project teams that um, from different departments too, because that enhances that, that teamwork. And as I mentioned, Certificate 3 will be finished in March for those 17 employees, I think. So that's very exciting. In May, we're going to develop a sustainability strategy. So we're going to, um, hopefully, we've got a consultant coming in that'll do some benchmarking for us so we know where we are. We do a lot of recycling already, but we're not really 
um, showcasing or reporting it. So we've got a benchmark where we are, set maybe a one to five year plan. Um, you know, solar energy, um, water tanks, go paperless in the office, in the factory as much as you can. In machining, because we have five or six CNC machines out there, we're going to do a quick change out of the program to see if we can reduce our setup times, further improving production efficiency. Uh, we, we do it each year, but we, we review cross training and succession, and succession planning. So, what happened a few years ago, we have one guru that can build that product. He's on annual leave or sick or he's busy. We've got no one else. So, we've been very active the last couple of years identifying backups for everyone. And it gives you so much more production strength. If you get a lot of orders in one, you've got so much flexibility to move people around the floor. And in our capital plan, it's the CMM visual quality measuring machine. We've still got a little bit old technology the way we're measuring our products we make. So we're going to go um, state of the art uh, CMM. Hopefully it'll be purchased this year. It's in the plan. And very exciting, we're going to actually go to a new gearbox design that we can export globally. So the design will start at the end of this year of how we're going to assemble the product. Engineers are already busy um, designing what that gearbox looks like. And again, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll celebrate our wins for 2019. So I, I see that as a bit of a blueprint. Um, it worked for us. Um, and you know, I would I highlight, I highly recommend getting in touch with you know, Peter Davies. Uh, he can put you on the right path, and, and networking is so important because you can learn so much off each other. Okay. Uh, in terms of inventory, how do you work? Can you manage inventory for just the time, or if you make a lot of it, how do you work? Yeah. How do they manage? And as a couple of this process. Yeah. So we. I spent the first five years with Changwon as a supply chain manager. So I did all the um, master data and inventory setups for Drifco here and Merlin nationally. So it's two different inventory models. An importation model where you make to stock. So if an order comes in before lunchtime today, it gets shipped out same day from any of our five regional warehouses. But Drifco manufacturing, you have to have a different inventory model. So uh, we set up, it's like Handman min Max within our SAP system, and we have all of our big suppliers are just in time. So we have our own truck, so it does a milk run three days a week into Sydney, and picks up the product we need for that week. We don't have much space out there, you'll notice, um, so we've got to be spot on with our inventory management. Uh, so our big suppliers are just in time, our small suppliers, we just have a min-max set up in SAP, Every morning our purchasing officer runs the report and re and rebuys the material needed. But there is a calculation on how to set that bin up. Because you don't want to hold too much stock. So generally, 50% of the product here is made to stock because it's very consistent sales. The other 50% is made to order. So we wait for the order to come in, we can make the product within two to five days and we ship it out. And we've communicated that to our customers so they know. Um, all I'd say on inventory is master data is key. You've got to have really, really good master data to control that. So, Graham, in uh, your industry, are you the leader? Yes, yeah, so the Chamberlain Group has about 80% market share in America. So, they're the world's largest. And then Grifco here. We have about 70% market share in Australia. Right. And Merlin, we have about 35 to 40% market share in Australia. So industry leader. Right. So Grifco wins, because we have to compete like everyone with uh, imported product. And it is cheaper than people are tempted by it. The Grifco wins on quality and customer service. So everyone knows they can use us as their warehouse, they can get a product tomorrow. Uh, that's good and bad. We want them to hold more stock. <laughs> um, but all of our quality processes as well, uh, we do make a very robust product and very, very rarely fails. And, that, and that, that brings customers back. So you're the Rolls Royce the roller doors. Uh -huh. That's it. Mm. Uh, I'll just say, don't impress it because 
indications the way it's supposed to be doing it, which is something that's quite difficult to get into organisations. We often change an organisation and they're so happy that they think they're there, but at least the message that you've given is you know you're not there yet. So you got, you know, and you'll never be there really, continue to improve that's it. That message is really difficult to get across. So we get around manufacturing for many years. The biggest challenge is for them to understand that there's a lot of learning to be done. But once you get the successes, they are great. Yeah. But then it doesn't stop. And that's what the model really shows. And, and we thought we were pretty good a couple of years ago. Then when we went to visit people, we're like, now these guys are picking it up, so we're going to catch up now. Before we had a clean workshop until we went to Archer. Yes. Yeah, so we've had to start a few things. Well, the Archer boys, if you did this, they'll learn from this stuff. They didn't make it. Yeah. Um, so how many different products have you got? So we would, if we go here, we would manufacture 100 different finished products. So it's a base unit but then we have a different motor and, and a lot of different configurations of what the customer needs. So it's probably a hundred different finished gears. Like bigger and wider. That's it. Okay. So we, we sell some products to the wine industry uh, and some to really big doors. So you've got five uh, door motors and stuff. Yeah, that's good. And lastly from me, before I hand over to Ed, is um, relentless pursuit of excellence. It is, I persevere and relentless, I persist, I keep going. You just have to keep striving for it. Um, I'm lucky to have a very, very good team here that um, is all very passionate about lean. And um, yeah, it's just the little things every single day. Uh, yeah, I'll be very uh, short in this one. I just want to show you some of the improvements done. And uh, you will see them in person in a moment anyway. So just uh, to show you how we came into this, uh, into this state. And I uh, just point back to what uh, Frank was saying. It's everything collaboration and engagement. Um, because the tools for many people could be like a black box. We don't know how to use them until we have the engagement of people. So most of the tools that you see there have been designed uh, through collaboration and also now are used through engagement of people. That's the only way to make them work in reality. In reality that's been the big learning. As uh, Graham was saying, the, the screens used to be the way to present the results, but there was no engagement at all, so that was a big learning for us. So from this side, you will see the, the new guys on board for continuous improvement, uh, where uh, we're trying to engage all the people so we can make it happen. We uh, dedicate uh, time and resources to really go and implement the ideas, because that's another thing. It's uh, how we stop for a moment and implement, and then come back and uh, get the benefits. Uh, also, the area boards, you will see them in a moment. Um, uh, that's, been, that's been the big learning in the last uh, years. Uh, how to engage people and really see the results uh, every day. That's been the, the big one. And also the design has been uh, through collaboration of uh, the team. So that's been really good. And also the new zero harm or um, hazard opportunities form has been uh, done through paper. And also with the help of Chris, uh, went into the pad, into the iPads or tablets to make it easier to, to put all the information so that Basically, we use that as the base for the Kaizen uh, opportunities as well. So now we are using e electronic forms to uh, capture all those ideas and hazards and uh, any uh, success as well, ideas. Uh, that's how we're tracking. So you will see, uh, uh, see them in a moment. But if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, but just a few things I thought I'd point out. We'll, we'll start with Junior over there with the Christmas hat on. This, that was a slide from Christmas, so <laughs> excuse the Christmas hat. Um, but yeah, look, recently we, we put a, an apprentice on, which is, we haven't done that for some time, probably since I was an apprentice a few years ago. Um, but yeah, look, we were really struggling to find machinists out there. I don't know if any other people are in the same boat, but CNC machinists are just a dying breed, unfortunately. So um, after talking with Russell from Archer and getting his feelings on things and trying to yeah, get some guidance from him, uh, yeah, he said, look, 
what they're doing is putting apprentices on, training them up, and that's kind of the, the best way to do it there because uh, one, they're not out there and, and, and uh, yeah, they're hard to find. So, so yeah, so Junior come on board um, through a, um, a government agency thing. Uh, he's going great guns. So his first year, almost into second year now, uh, he can set up you know, a few of the CNC machines. He's getting involved with the robotic cell. Um, so that's been a really good, good thing for us. Uh, a couple of other things, which I'm going to go into more detail in part of the tour, but we've gone to a um, paperless measuring system. So we manufacture probably about 200 parts in the uh, CNC uh, machine shop, um, you know, maybe 150 on the laser cutter, etc., etc. So there was a lot of paper floating around, printing off A3, check on that. Look, it's been good for us in regards to we got it for next to nothing, and now all of our um, uh, consumables, like our cutting tips, drills, taps, and all the rest of it, are stored in that system. So you literally go up with a swipe card or a pin number, you know, you, you type in what you're looking for, and it just opens up the drawer and you grab it out. And again, it's all live infantry control and, uh, and all the rest of it. So look, there's many things, or hopefully a lot more stuff that I'll show you as in part of the tour, but those are a few things that I thought we would, uh, we would highlight. Any questions about the slide? or? In general? Oh, there's one more, sorry, my bad. <laughs> there is. Um, yeah, so where the uh, new um, uh, CNC cell is getting put in at the moment is actually where our plastic injection moulding area used to be. So again, part of the tour is you'll see where we actually moved the plastic injection moulding area. It made a lot of sense. Um, we did the visual stream map back with corporate partners and the spaghetti diagram was very messy, so it actually made sense not only because now all of our CNC machines will be on one side of the factory, but also all the finished goods for plastics live literally just on the other side of that photo. Uh, the guy that runs the injection machines also runs the laser cutter, which is literally here to the left of that machine, uh, so it saves him walking 42 kilometres a day. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the things we did there. We also purchased a new second-hand vendor um, last year to help with quality and and safety because our old vendor was back in the, the dark ages with the 85 model or something. So that's been a really good pick up for us as well. And then just getting back to basics with shadow boards. So all this stuff had kind of come in years, like you know, when we first started the lean journey, but I'm sure everyone's got a similar story where you, you implement either shadow boards or some lean stuff and it kind of everyone's really keen on it and then a few faces change and then things start to taper away. So again, part of that journey is, is just revisiting and looking at the shadow boards and going, oh, well, some tools are missing, or are we actually doing this properly? And we just revamped everything once again. So I don't think there's any shame in saying, hey, well, you know, things have gone back to, I wouldn't say square one, but things are kind of starting to drift or drop away. And we just reinvented it in most areas, if not all of them, should look very similar now. So, so yeah, that's, that's it. Right. <laughs> any thoughts, thinking? I have a question. One of the slides mentioned a uh, changing processor and hazards and opportunities. I was interested, interested to hear more about that. Yeah, so I guess with our zero harm culture, we had to look at ways of um, identifying hazards. And we weren't doing that very well. So now we have an like, electronic and paper version. And we try and, I mean, we've got Chris behind you. I don't know what our ratio is on hazards. It's like 20 to 1 at the moment. In 2017, there were many more incidents reported than hazards. And so when I restarted uh, in late 2017, yeah. we tried to reverse that ratio. Initially our goal was to have twice as many hazard opportunities put in the system as incidents occurring. Yeah. Um, 2018 we probably achieved 10 to 1. Yeah. So that was via getting rid of all the, the, the onerous paperwork involved in it. Okay. So we made it uh, electronic. Yep. So you can put it in on your phone, you put it in on the tablets or on your computers. Yep. And so the same system that applies in the factory also applies to the sales staff out in the field in Perth. Uh, they can use the same system. Mm. And it just, we tried to make it very, very easy to put the stuff in. And sometimes at the expense of a great, you know, a lot of detail, yeah. but we can follow the detail up sure. later. If we needed to. Yeah. So the ratio during 2018 was 10 to 1. Yeah. Uh, so that means yeah. that hazard op opportunities yeah. uh, came in at that sort of rate. Yeah. And the reason we could do that was we, we had multiple sources. So 
So we have the guys who take five in the morning, even though they know the job, they do it every day, you still get them to say, okay, is it still the same this morning? Am I working with someone inexperienced? Do I need to, you know, the take five system? Yeah. Yeah. So that is one conduit. The other conduit is the success sheets you'll see out there. So whenever we get a red, we say, what's the red for? And there's an action to sort it out. So that's another opportunity that's coming in and the ones that people actually put in themselves. Yeah. And does that system cover safety as well as environment or just or is it just look, it's safety focus? No, 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 it's not safety. That's why we call it hazard yeah. opportunities. Yeah. So it might just be someone thinking, you know, that you know pallet there doesn't make sense, do they have to walk around it? You know, so they put that in. Okay. Might not be safety. Oh, okay. Could be, you know, uh, as an example, one of the sales guys put in a thing. He said, "Look, you're getting the office done up. Why don't we look at handless, you know, washing systems? Yeah, okay. You know, rather than the taps." So the environment could be good. It could yeah. be like we've got a drum of oil sitting not in a bump on a bun or something. I mean, like, there's no reason why it couldn't do that. So it's capturing any opportunity. Any yeah. opportunity. So it's like a yeah. It's like a digital suggestion box. Yeah. 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 When you see it, it's really easy. Yeah. The good thing is, you do it on these things. Yeah. That was just a Google form. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah. like anyone can sell for free, I think, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we don't pay yeah. for it. Yeah. Uh, we just use the Google forms, all the yeah. data goes into the yeah. system. All you've got to do is access the data, yeah. tidy it up every month or week, and, and close them out. Yeah. And it gives us a follow up yeah. uh, process as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a big system to yeah. track that. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I have a question about mobile phones. Some companies have some difficulty with mobile phones, the use in the factories. In fact, some companies ban mobile phones because people tend to occasionally go on, on the mobile phones, not just in the front and do the work. So I don't know how you manage that. Uh, yeah, so we don't have a no mobile phone policy on it. On the phone comes out, we just up the standard per hour, an extra one or two. <laughs> but, but no, so we're okay with that. But obviously, you know, the guys are, you know, don't uh, take the mickey too much. If they've got to take a personal call, it's important. We're obviously not going to stop them. Um, if they're there talking about what they're going to do on Friday night or something, it's a bit of a different story. But, yeah. um, but again, like because we're saying, the iPads, we've got two central iPads in assembly and machining to log safety hazards or uh, Kai's arms, continuous improvements. They can walk up to them at any time and, and put in an idea or a safety hazard. Obviously, if it's a uh, safety hazard that's life threatening, but the idea is don't go and put it on the form, go and do something about it. Um, but yeah. And, and the first page actually says, please stand in a safe position when you're putting this in. Because <laughs> we did notice that people were you know, not looking around. Alright, any other questions? So I think there's a couple of things that. that um, that came out for me, and I'm sure you've seen it as well. It's about commitment and leadership. You know, this is about, no matter what you do, without the, the leadership commitment to, to making it happen, it just doesn't happen. So that's really important. I think the other piece, it, it, I mean, they've done some big things, there's a whole lot of small things as well. You know, so it doesn't have to be the big big thing, you can't afford to do the big thing, you just start with the small things that make sense. It's all common sense, this is not, this is not rocket science, it's all common sense, you know. You think about safety, you think about quality, it's about doing it right the first time. Right? And the, the other thing which these guys do, and I've observed it, is the standard you set is the standard you, you walk past. So if you walk past something that's not right, you say nothing, guess what? That's going to be the standard. Yeah. Right? So, you know, it's, it's all the mechanical things, it's all the pictorial things, it's also the behavioural side of things. That's really key, and that's where you start changing the culture. So, and that's what these guys have done, and that's why we're here, because they, they are really um, a benchmark for the three in terms of what, what they're doing. And once you get out there, you really understand it, and uh, yeah, it's great. So look, I just want to thank the guys for you know, um, being great support. I think the other thing Graham mentioned a couple of times, he's learned a lot from other companies. And that's what we're trying to drive with our organisation, is to, you know, I know it's difficult to find the time, but geez, when you do and you see stuff, it's inspiring, number one, and you have different ideas, or you take an idea and you can change it to suit you, right? So those couple of hours you spend going somewhere, you recover that cost really quickly your time because you've been able to implement something that's really made a big difference in your business. So we've got some great companies in the, in the, in the coast, 
Uh, and uh, yeah, we're, we're pushing hard to promote you know, what they're, they're doing. So. Frank, I'll probably just mention one other thing just to convert all this into dollars and cents. Our operating costs for 2019 will be less than 2018. So these results actually really do make a difference. It's not just having a nice battery, um, but reducing our cost base by doing it. Well, it's, and it's, a, it's ultimately obviously for the poor in business, you know. <laughs> Um, but you know that, that that's critical. And I think too the other thing is I've said this to a couple of people, you know, the fact that they're starting to invest in robotics is also key. I mean manufacturing's got a challenge. Now we can stay competitive is you know doing automation. And automation today compared to twenty years ago is significantly less than cost terms. You know, I was saying to somebody I did projects in the early nineties and we're getting an eight year payback, I could never get them through. Um, today you get less than three years back back sometimes to the robot, you buy a robot now for a hundred thousand bucks, you know. So you get more bits and pieces to it. But you know, in early you know, twenty years ago they were you know, eight, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars, you know, so yeah. Well, obviously yeah, it's more about I suppose is it what's the percentage increase in margin based on the product sales? Nothing too detailed I suppose, but you can actually say and again, yeah, definitely. So our margin last year and this year has already exceeded budget, so it definitely has gone up a few percentage points. Yeah. yeah. And then we're getting less pressure from sales managers as well about why your costs so expensive and costly. So we're definitely having less of those questions. That's a key indicator. Yeah. That's always a good, good sign. And one of the things just to touch on too, and we touch on out there, just with the robotics, and that probably comes to some people's mind that. In, Putting robotics into factories means loss of jobs. Um, not, not to everyone, but some people have that mindset. But not one person has lost their job <clears throat> due to us putting robotics into the factory. Um, so, for example, the, the person that was there hand loading the shafts that the robot now does is being cross trained in that plastics area where we only have one guru who can run that area. So, all that cross training <clears throat> is starting to happen. People being able to go on training courses and um, learn QC and, and, and all sorts of stuff now based on that robot doing all the easy stuff that we can get humans doing better stuff so uh, hopefully that helps with the mindset behind the robotics journey as well and that point of difference not sure point of difference so they you know came and talk about quality plus has come back because you know their products just keep on keeping on right so you got to look at where your point of difference is and how you can you enhance that and really promote that so and that, again you know the fact that they're designing stuff there uh, is really great as well